Welcome to Today in Biblical Prophecy. We are blessed that you are joining us as we're in our three-part series on the New World Order, the New World Order that is imminent, that's going to be coming out of the Third World War that Dr. Warrior has been talking about on his sermons. As always, my name is Andy Wallace, and I'm joined by your pastor and mine, last day's prophet, man of God, Dr. Robert Mawiri. Open us in prayer and greet the people, Dr. Mawiri. Thank you for watching. You know, God loves you so much. He wants you to know about what's coming mm -hmm. to secure you and to prepare you. So let's pray together. Father God, I pray your special anointing upon everyone listening. Yes, Lord. Wisdom, yes. understanding of these things, and above mm. all, clarity in terms mm -hmm. of what to do. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you because it says, ask and shall be given, <laughs> and knock the door will be opened. Mm -hmm. So we've asked now, thank you for coming and speaking to us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. I am loving this series because it's going along. When the, the conflict in Ukraine and Russia started, then it became a war. All of this now, as you've been teaching in your sermons, is leading up to a new world order. And today we're in part three. Part one, you already talked about the one world government. Part two, you talked about the one world religion. Today, it's going to talk about the one world currency, the one world financial system that is coming. Take us to the it is written and show us in the Bible what you want us to know from this and what you have for us, Dr. Murray. As you're listening, the word of God is for guidance, mm. how to make practical decisions that will affect you and your family in the future. Mm -hmm. That's why God has raised us up to talk about these things because we are in transition from this present financial system to a whole new system. Mm. And unless you are informed, equipped, and prepared, you won't be able to make the transition. You will be destroyed. Mm. That's why it's so essential to listen to this message and to share this message with others. Mm -hmm. And scriptures are clear that we're coming to a time in which we're going to see a new financial reset. I'm talking about a global financial reset. Mm -hmm. uh, that was given to us nearly 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. Described to us, shown in a vision yes. to John on the island of Patmos, mm -hmm. and he was projected by the, by the Spirit into our day, and saw the collapse of the present financial system and the rising up of a new financial system before the return of our Lord and Savior. And that is in the book of Revelation chapter 13. Let's go to it. Mm. Let's find out wh how this will work out. Uh, 16 and to, 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 um, to, to, to 18. Okay, Revelation 13, 16 through 18. I'm going to read from the NIV. He forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on his right hand or his forehead, so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number. Verse 18, this calls for wisdom. If anyone has insight, let him calculate the number of the beast, for it is man's number, as you always tell us, it is 666. That's right. Now, it is clear here. John says there will be a biochip that we put on every person's forehead or on their right arm or right hand. But wherever it is, you know, it's it, because in the ancient language, people say, well, uh, this is not being put where the Bible says because of the specificity of the English language. But in Hebrew, uh, it could be anywhere on the arm. Mm. So we, we need to, to pull back and go back to the original language. Mm -hmm. So we have an understanding before we are deceived by the enemy. Because mm -hmm. he can use the language to deceive us. Now we are talking about a biochip that will be put on everybody. Without which you cannot buy or sell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Think about it. 
the number of the beast, 666. John, looking into the future, saw the technology that will be able to put a biochip on every person and describes it and says, without it, you cannot buy or sell. That means he is talking about there is coming a technology and there's coming a day when men will have this ability to biochip everyone and then to use that number uh, for, for financing. It's like cryptocurrency uh, trade. Uh, it's going to be the basis of the future currency. And he is seeing this in the spirit. And telling us so that we would be prepared before that transition. Because now we know the transition begins in the 17th week of Daniel. Three and a half years into, the, into, into this, there's going to be a formation of this system. It's going to be coming forth. And we're going to begin to see the things that show that the current financial system is going to collapse. The pandemic... Uh, we're talking about lockdowns, uh, economic meltdowns. We're talking about um, um, economic st stagnation, inflation. We're talking about now the, the, the global energy crisis that we are facing right now because of the conflict in Ukraine and the, the whole changes that are taking place within the balance of trade uh, globally and all shaking the, the economy and shrinking the economy and causing many difficulties. Finally, the system is, is going to just collapse because of the, the weight of all these uh, pandemics. More are coming. More pandemics are coming. More yes. lockdowns are coming. And so we're talking about pandemics. We're talking about uh, social unrest because of um, the cost of goods and services. Uh, just, it's going to be very difficult to make a living just because of the circumstances we're in, the political circumstances, the, 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 the pandemics, and all these things combined together will bring a very difficult future that the Bible calls perilous times, difficult times. And those difficult times that are before us, we are informed when they're going to happen, how they're going to happen, so that we would be a step ahead of the enemy, and we will prepare ourselves as it was in the days of Noah. Amen and amen. Noah prepared, positioned himself to overcome the crisis that was coming. What is the biblical prophecy for? Biblical prophecy is for preparation to participate in God's plan and purpose to overcome, to go around the enemy, because he is looking for a surprise attack. But God says, no, 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 you can't surprise my kids. I'm going to inform amen, them, I'm going to amen, tell them, amen. I'm going to prepare them so that they will be ahead of the enemy. Mm. This is why we are here, Andy and I are here, sharing this so that you, a child of amen. God, chosen by God, handpicked before the foundation of the world, to be a joint heir with Christ Jesus. Yes, Lord. You are precious to him. You are important to him. He, 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 he doesn't want you to be destroyed by the enemy. He doesn't want to see the enemy take advantage of you. That's why he's trying to get your attention to say, listen to me as mm. it was in the days of Noah. Mm. Noah heard from the Lord. Noah was given the plan from the Lord. Noah did what God told him and Noah survived and thrived during that time. So that's why we are sharing about the coming economic transformation and financial transformation the new digital currency based upon 666 biochip. Dr. Mori, uh, you mentioned John on the island of Patmos had this vision. I want to read something from Ezekiel, and I want you to expand on it. In Ezekiel 7, verse 19, it says this, They will throw their silver in the streets, and their gold will be an unclean thing. Their silver and gold will not be able to save them in the day of the Lord's wrath. They will not satisfy their hunger or fill their stomachs with it, for it has been made to stumble into sin. Is this also talking about this financial system? And, my, and within your answer, talk about the spirit of mammon, because I know that grips so many people. Hey, Andy. 
is the, that is the heart of the problem. It is the, 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 the love of money is the root of all evil. Mm. It is the love of money that has made the church to compromise the word. It's the love of money that, that has driven the people into just apostasy because they are so in love with money that they think that money will strengthen them, protect them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, from everything. So they try to accumulate as much money as possible as a security because of the fear of the future. They don't know that the future belongs to God and that money will not secure <laughs> you in the future Amen. except the Lord. And that's, that's so sad because the churches are caught up in that. Uh, the, the love of money has made the church to compromise the word. It's so sad that we are living in the days the Bible talks about. The love of many is waxing cold because of the love of money. Now, here Ezekiel is speaking about your gold and your silver, mm -hmm. your money mm -hmm. will not help you. First of all, it won't help you because, number one, unless you have a biochip, you can't buy or sell. Mm -hmm. So... There you are, your money without a biochip, you cannot buy or sell. And the moment you take the biochip, you have rejected Jesus. We're going to get to that in just and a minute. So because this money that is causing the people to chase after money rather than chase after God, it's, it has become a snare to them. Because they think that their money, the gold and the silver, will secure them mm. in the days that lies ahead. Mm. But the Bible says it, it won't secure you because you can't go there because unless you are part of the new financial reset, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, gold and silver is not going to be a commodity that you can use to access the markets because it's locked up into the number of the beast, 666, without which you can't. That means all the accumulative resources that you have will not save you. That's why God wants us to know his word and know his plan and be about the Father's business so that we are positioned, like Noah, to overcome, to go through to the other side. Dr. Mori, I know of people, you probably do too, that I know that they are buying gold and silver and storing it in their safes. They're taking currency in hundreds of thousands of dollars and hiding it in their homes or digging holes in the ground and hiding all this, thinking that that's going to save them. You're telling us no way. Ezekiel said it is no good. It can work because the, uh, the, the food supply is going to be controlled by the government. The water source is going to be controlled by the government. And the only way you can ac access the food, access the water, basic necessities, is through 666 biochip. And so all the money in the ground won't buy nothing. All the gold uh, touched away won't help you because you just missed God's plan because you have your plan. That's why we have this uh, Q&A to deal with that so that you will not be going astray led by your stinking thinking and doing the what you think will secure me and my family. It will only expose them. It won't help them. The thing that you need to know is what God says. Let's read that one more time, what God said. I want everyone to listen to this. He said it hundreds and hundreds of times. Listen to this scripture in Revelation 14, 9 through 11. Listen to the ramifications for taking the number of the beast. A third angel followed them and said in a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast in its image and receives its mark on their foreheads or their hand, they too will drink of the wine of God's fury, which has been poured out full strength into the cup of God's wrath. They will be tormented with burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever. There will be no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and its image or for anyone who receives the mark of the name. It doesn't matter how much money you've got. It doesn't matter what you do. If you take the mark of the beast, 
This says you are separated from God forever and you will burn in eternal damnation. Am I understanding this scripture correct? You are understanding the, the scripture correct, but here is the, one of the things that as we talked before and we continue to talk, the reason why most of God's people are going to take the number of the beast is this idea that the Antichrist, the false prophet, the, the New World Order, the Great Tribulation will not take place mm. until the church has been raptured. So that deception mm. tells them, hey, secure yourself financially. Get the gold, get the silver, um, prepare to survive. And then as the world demands that they participate in the new currency, the new global financial reset, a digital currency based upon 6-6, six, six, they would take 6-6 six, six because they believe that they, they should, it, this will never happen until the church is gone. And one of the reasons they give is that the restrainer um, is the Holy Spirit. Because mm. they believe the restrainer is the Holy Spirit. Mm. They think as long as the church is here, the restrainer will hold back the Antichrist. So there will be no Antichrist uh, because the church is here until the church is gone. Then the Antichrist. Well, that's not in Scripture. There is not a Scripture that amen, says that. Amen. There's not one verse that says that. There is a verse that I can give you right now, Matthew 24, uh, verse 29 to 31. It says, after. immediately after the tribulation mm -hmm. of those days. That means the church is going through the tribulation. So that's the first thing to establish. Now, once you know that, you've got to say, how am I going to live through the great tribulation? That's the Goshen issue now. How God has a Goshen, as Noah has given the place to hide, yes. how to hide, what to do, and there will be the, the lands of Goshen that God has his people, and he will then tell you why, because you're going to ask him. Mm. Because until you know the truth, the truth will set you free. But if you don't know the truth, you're going to think, well, I don't need to know that because I'm going to be raptured out of here. Well, there is no scripture that says that mm -hmm. because there is no scripture that says that. There is a scripture that says immediately after the tribulation of those days. That means after we go through the great tribulation, which means a period in which the current financial system will going to be scrapped out and thrown out and a new system put in where you have to have a biochip. And with that biochip, you'll be able to have credit and you'll be able to buy or sell. And Christians are going to take it thinking, this is not the number of the beast because the church is still here. Well, I'm telling you, the church will be here. The church will be deceived. The church will take the number of the beast and they will go to eternity in the lack of fire. Let me, Period. Let me paraphrase what you just said so that... So that you, you said it so perfectly, but I'm, I, I'm going to paraphrase this and yeah, you tell please. me if I do a good enough job with this. Yeah. Many of the brethren, many of the people are going to fall because yeah. they believe in a pre-trib rapture that yeah. they've been told about. Yeah. And the pre-trib rapture says that anything that happens while you're still here cannot be of the devil exactly. because you're still here. Exactly. Because God loves us so much that he's not going to make us exactly. do that. So it's okay to store up money. Okay. It's okay to be, try to be rich. It's okay to take anything the government tells you to take yeah. in your body or anything like this because it can't be the mark of the beast because we're still here. Exactly. Because they believe that we're going to be raptured before the mark of the beast comes out. That's what you're telling the people, the great deception. Am I right? It, it is the falling away that must come before the Lord. Second Thessalonians yeah. 2, 3. The, the, the Lord made it very clear immediately after the tribulation of these days. And the apostle Paul makes it clear. There will be a falling away mm. before the Antichrist is revealed. Mm -hmm. That means the church is going to embrace the, the, the Antichrist. 
and they're going to, to follow him because of the deception mm. that they think this is not the Antichrist, mm. this is not the end of time, because they don't know the timeline, they don't know the, 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 the truth regarding when the rapture is going to take place. The Bible gives us a clear timeline immediately after the tribulation of those days. Now I know, because I used to preach pre-trib, pre -trib, and my scripture, I mean, my answer will be like, one will be taken, one will be left behind, so hey, there is a, there is a, there is a the left behind thing, you know, uh, you are you're left behind because you're not a, such a good Christian, uh, mm. you're compromised, and so you, we leave you behind, we're out of here, this is a secret thing that's going to happen, oh. we're going to go, one, you know, it talks about two, two men, mm. one is taken, one is left behind, you know, then you know the issue. We've explained. You, you know the issue. <laughs> the disciples were so... Smart. Luke 17, 37. Exactly. Where Give, are they taking? Exactly where. And he, he answers where they're going. <laughs> he does not say they're going to heaven. Mm -mm. He doesn't say that. He does not say that. <laughs> it tells us where they're going. To the place of the carcass. Carcass. Where the vultures are gathered. Yes. That is in the valley of Megiddo. Amen. That is the judgment of nations. And that's from clear. What scriptures... It, even Jesus speaking in the parable of the tares, what did he say? He says the tares will be gathered first. Amen, amen. So they're going to be gathered first. If you're a tear, you will be gathered first. <laughs> That's right. And you're going to the place of the carcass. Amen. And, and people build a whole theology on the verse before, and they never want they never to read the next verse. That tells where they're going. That's the deception. That is the deception of Satan because he's a liar. Okay. Here's what I want us to do. We've got about 15 more minutes here. It is not our job to convince you on whether or not there's a pre-trip, on whether or not any of this is truth. Amen? Yeah, man. It's not our job. No, no. It's our job to tell you what the Scripture says, for a last day's prophet to interpret through divine revelation for you, and your job to go and ascertain whether the Scripture is true and whether the Holy Spirit tells you this. For those of you that are listening, for those of you that will share this, for those of you that understand this is truth, now I want us to go into what do the remnant, what do the overcomers, what are we to do with our finances, right. knowing that it's coming. What is it now? By the it is written, show us scriptures on what we're to do. First of all, before we even go to scripture, let me just say this. When you look at the current global economic uh, situation, uh, the bailouts, the, uh, the, the lockdowns, the, 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 the energy crisis, and all these things, they are all pointing to the collapse of the current financial system. The, the, the people in the world, in the know, they are talking about a global financial reset because things have to be reset, uh, rebooted, uh, because we can't continue the way we're going. So it's inevitable to bring a new system in order to, uh, it's like in, the, in ancient times among the Jewish people, they will have what they call the year of jubilee. Uh -huh. it, was a, it was a reset, a financial yes. reset. So there, there is a financial reset coming, and in that financial reset, we know that it's going to be based upon a digital currency uh -huh. tied to 666 a biochip. Uh -huh. So now because of that, we, the people of God, need to find out, first of all, the plan of God for our lives. Number two, will we continue in the marketplace because Jesus said, occupy till I come. Mm -hmm. Remain in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And so why should we remain in the marketplace if all is going to collapse and there will be no future? I want to first of all answer the, that question because many people say, well, should I just quit and sell everything sure. and do nothing? So let's, let's deal with, yes, you can continue in business and make money according to divine guidance, mm, according the to the leadings of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you can 
prosper in the age of chaos mm. and you can position in the age of chaos and you can be strengthened and you can be a, a Joseph that's going to help others in the time of amen, need. Amen. The preparation, preparation, that's what Noah was told, prepare, he prepared the food, he prepared the place, he did preparation. This is what the Bible talks about. That's why it is important to know whether we can make money or whether God gives us the money. Because many of us think, well, I made this money. I control oh. this money. It's my money. I don't want you to tell me what to do with my money. It's my security. Mm. And I don't want to hear you. What does this, <laughs> let's find what the scripture I says about know. this. In the book of Deuteronomy. Yes. 8, 8, 8, 17 and 18. Deuteronomy 8, 17 and 18. You may say to yourself, my power and my strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. So confirms His covenant, which He swore to His ancestors mm -hmm. as it is today. He now, gives us. And now, he gives and now, us. Now, the money that you have belongs to the Lord. Oh, yes. It is God who gives you the idea, opens the way, uh, brings the finances, prospers you, that you may give that to the Lord. Mm. You are not the owner. It's the ownership that destroys you. It's a stewardship. Mm -hmm. We're called to a stewardship of his resources. Mm -hmm. We are caretakers. The resources we have come from the Lord, belongs to the Lord. So we cannot make the decision of what to do with those resources. we got to go back to God who gave us the power to make that money, to bring the, the resources together so that he would direct us. He will tell us. And he tells us right here that he might establish his covenant. That mm -hmm. means the money you have is for establishing the covenant, the mm -hmm. new covenant, mm -hmm. which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen, this amen. gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to every nation, then shall the end come, and that's going to take money to get the gospel to all the nations mm -hmm. before the Lord comes. Because it's all about finishing the king's business. Mm -hmm. It's all about mm -hmm. being faithful to do what God wants us to do. Not have our own agenda, taking the resources from God to pursue our own agenda, do it our own way, and then miss on God's plan and purpose. That's when you, money becomes a snare to you. Tell us the it is written on how s there's a scripture that I've got in mind of where someone abused the finances that God gave them. Show us that and tell us about that. Well, I think we should um, look at... Um, you know, before we go that way, well, why don't we look at uh, Psalm 24, verse, um, verse, verse, verse 1, just to establish that the money you have belongs to the Lord. Everything in the earth belongs to the Lord. In, it must be returned to the Lord. We are his servants. We save the king. He owns everything. He owns not only everything we have, he owns us. So everything that we are, everything we'll ever be, is from him, for him, and for his glory. So let's read that. Dr. Morey, I don't even need to go look it up because this is one that you gave me eight years ago that I have memorized that has helped me in stewarding God's resources. And here it is, Psalm 24, 1. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it and all who live in it that is the Lord's. Now, isn't that clear? It that, can't get any more clear. And the, everything. That means everything I have belongs to the Lord. Amen. So the problem is, what, is exactly what you just brought up. People that forget that everything they have it belongs to the Lord. Yes, sir. And they take possession of mm. it. Because what you take possession of takes possession of you. Amen. Because Amen. what you control, controls you. Amen. So, so here we are, the people are controlled by their materialism 
and their hearts are not in the right place. Mm -hmm. they, they trust in money rather than trust in God. And they, they, their security is in their money, not in the Lord. And that's why God's going to judge all that money system. He's going to collapse that's the money right. system. That's and right. so that those people that are holding on and hogging on the money and not doing what God wants them to do, God's going to change the system and expose their hearts. Okay. And that's when they will yield to the devil because they're already compromised. Mm. Their heart's not in the right place because money means more to them than the Lord. Amen. So they're going to be exposed because crisis don't make you or break you but reveal you. Yes. So this crisis that's coming, financial crisis, is going to reveal the hearts of men. Okay. And I want you to read Matthew 25, 25. Matthew 25, 25. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. You see, here is what belongs to you. The parable. In the parable. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> he got scared. He got scared. Just like people today, you said. Yeah, exactly. So they are so scared. And rather than give that money to the Lord, they multiplied in souls, saved and brought into the kingdom. They are hiding it for the rainy day. And they are, they are driven by fear. It's a fear. Fear. It does not belong to the people of God. Amen. That's why there's Amen. 365 Amen. fear not in the Bible. Because the fear is what's driving the people. Fear of what's the uncertainty that's coming. The, the, everything is, is being shaken and there's unpredictability. Unpre you can't predict what's going to happen. So markets want predictability. They want to know, well, if, right. if, if I do this, this is going to happen. Well, now you can't predict because God is what? He's shaking everything to tell you, stop. Look up to me. Up I'll to guide you. I'll lead you. I'll show you where to put the money and to multiply the money for the kingdom, for my glory. And that's why the people are hiding the money right now because they think when the economy collapses, <laughs> their money They'll will be save able to them. go buy bread with it. <laughs> now, that is just a foolish uh, confidence in the mm. flesh. It won't help you. It won't do nothing to you. Now, what I want to say at this point is, what should you do with your money? You have money. What should you do with it? We know that in the days that lies ahead, you're going to be asked to take a biochip in order to return your money. Mm -hmm. Or if you don't take the biochip, you're going to lose your money. So what's the use of your money waiting to be taken and to be lost? It says they'll throw away their money in the streets it's and easy. their gold and their silver will be worthless because that's what he's talking about. That money will be worthless. Mm -hmm. It will be worth the paper it's written on. It's worth nothing. It's worthless. Because you can't even fill your belly with you it. Want, because you can't buy anything with it. Nothing. It's, it, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's worth the paper it's written on. So we're coming to that hour that people with billions and billions of dollars that's going to be completely worthless. Unless they're so scared and so in love of money that they take the biochip to get exactly. to it. Exactly. But if they don't, they're going to have to lose that. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the money that God has given them for? God gives us money now as it was in the days of Noah. To prepare. To prayer, which yes. is to prepare the hearts of the people for the kingdom of God. Mm. The preparation is spiritual preparation because Noah was spiritually prepared. That's why he would be able to be in a position to discern the mind of God. Yes, Lord. Why? Because he walked with God. Mm -hmm. He was spiritually prepared. So there is spiritual preparedness before there is physical preparedness mm. and financial preparedness. That means you got to hear God. When you hear God, he gives you the plan. Yes. Noah received the plan from God. Mm -hmm. he, he, he was not only given the plan, he was given the time when it was going to happen, when he had to be prepared. Mm -hmm. So there is going to be full detailed information transmitted to you by the Spirit when you are obedient to him. Amen. It's the Amen. obedience that God's looking for. It's not me trying to secure myself because that's his fear. That's not trusting God. When you trust the Lord, you don't have to 
to be driven by fear. Because he has given us holy boldness. Hallelujah. God has not given us the spirit of fear, Hallelujah. but of power yes, and of a sound mind. That means we have holy boldness to step out, to do the will of God, to spend the money for the glory of God. And know that it's a stewardship. He that gave me the money will give me more. Amen. Because he is the God that says, ask and it shall be given. He will keep on giving you, keep on blessing you, keep on guiding you, keep on leading you. There is no end to the blessings that God will give to those who are obedient to him. Now, if you trust in money and think money will secure you, you are setting yourself to be deceived by the Antichrist because of your fear of going without. You're going to yield to the temptation to get the biochip mm. and you're going to love the people that tell you it's not the biochip mm -hmm. because this is going to happen after you're going to heaven. So it, it's okay. Go ahead, take the number of beasts so you can secure your money because that's what you want to hear and that's what you're going to hear mm. and that's going to lead you to an eternal domination mm. in the lake of fire. Mm. My God loves you too much to let you listen to he this so that you, because you are an apple of God's eye, that you tend to God and tend to his word and examine these things and see whether they be so. Okay. Because it's not what we say, it's what scripture says. It's, right. not that we, it's not that we're anti pre trip rapture, anti this, we're not anti anybody. We're just pro-Jesus. We just want Jesus. <laughs> we just want to glorify Jesus. We, we, we have no agenda. Hallelujah. We're not That's trying it. to make friends and be popular. We're just trying to be faithful. We're not trying to be successful, but faithful. So we're going to do what God tells us. We're going to say what God says. That's and right. we are not going to be like, oh, we, we can't say that because we, we lose friends. Well, we have a friend called Jesus. Hallelujah. He, will never, he will never leave us, nor forsake us. And he's the only friend I want to have. That's right. So I want you to be a friend of God. And I want you to do what God says. He says the gospel will be preached to every nation in these last days. And he's, gonna give, he's giving you the finances. Mm -hmm. He's giving you the resources for the purpose of bringing the gospel to all the world because you are a steward of his money. It's not your money. It's mm. his money Amen. for his Amen. work. So be asking him, how should I do this? What do you want me to do? Because unless you ask, you won't hear. Mm. And most of you are scared to ask because mm. he's going to tell you to give it to, to the ministry or give it to, <laughs> to, 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 uh, to what he wants done. And you, you are like the, the rich, you remember the young, the young rich ruler yes. uh, that uh, Jesus said, you know, just go home, sell everything. And <laughs> oh, but I got a lot of money. I can't be doing He's like, that. Oh, no, let's not go there. Mm -hmm. There are many like him today. Mm -hmm. I pray that you will seek the Lord on these things because we are now in the days in which the one world government is going to create a global financial reset mm -hmm. based upon the biochip 666. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do not listen to the Lord now, it will soon be too late. That's right. Thank you for that, Dr. Murray. You know, I'm going to have Dr. Murray close us in prayer. Here's what I want you to do. This is the final part three, one world finances, one world currency that's coming out of this new world order. Share these three messages on these Q&As with your family, with your friends. Some of the people are never going to believe this. They're never going to change. You know, our responsibility is to get the word out to the people, to pray for them, and then the Holy Spirit will do the convicting and the changing. It's the Holy Spirit that's going to do that. We want to thank you again for joining us in these Q&As. We're going to pray and see what it is that God would have uh, us bring to you next time, uh, what the topic will be next time. For now, as always, we want to give you the opportunity to join us here at Good News World, to join us in our radio station at WRNO, to help support us prayerfully and also financially. We've talked about the finances. One day it's not going to be any good. Maybe the Lord would have you give... Uh, Whatever, nothing is too small, nothing is too large as this ministry carries the good news of Jesus Christ on shortwave radio to over 1.3 billion people around the world, and we want to grow that. You see, it says that the Great Commission has got to be fulfilled before Jesus comes back. He's not coming back until every tribe, tongue, and nation has heard the name of Jesus, and that's what we do here. So you can give two different ways for that. You can go to this link 
on our website. There's a donate button at the bottom. You can put in your credit card information and give as the Lord would tell you to give. You can write a check, cashier's check, money order, business check, make them out to Good News World, and you can mail those checks or whatever it is to the P.O. box that you see on the bottom of your screen now. We want to thank you for watching these Q&As. We'll be back next time with whatever the Holy Spirit tells us to bring to you. And for now, bless the people, Dr. Morey. I want to bless you because you're already blessed. If you know the Lord, He loves you. Yes. Apple of His eye. You're, you're precious. The best of your years are before you. Hallelujah. He that called you is faithful. He'll keep you until the end. So may the Lord mm. bless you and keep you. Thank you. May the Lord lift up His countenance. Yes, Lord and shine upon you, mm. and give you his Thank peace you, in the name of the Father, mm. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.